we doing today? Thumbs up? Yeah? So this, of course, is always the most popular program that we do during the summer. We love the Blank Park Zoo here. Um, so I just want to say thank you for coming. If you feel like you didn't get enough zoo action this morning, um, she'll be here this afternoon at 1 o'clock, too. And that's usually a less crazy performance. So if you feel like your kids can't, you know, like, it's just not happening, you can come back at 1 o'clock, too. So um, I'm excited to find out what she brought. Let's give Mallory from the Blank Park Zoo a really warm welcome. Okay, well I work at the Blank Park Zoo. I work for the education department there, so my job is really cool. I get to travel the whole state of Iowa. Sometimes I even get to go to other states for work and teach kids and grown-ups all about animals. Today I brought four animals with me. They are part of the education department as well. They are animal ambassadors and their job is to help teach you about animals. I will get out one animal at a time today. I will talk about that animal for a little bit. While I'm talking, should you guys be talking? No. No, it's going to be really noisy in here if we're not all trying our best to stay quiet. And it's going to be hard for people to hear. It will also be scary for the animals if we are being noisy. So most importantly, we want to make them feel safe and comfortable, right? So we're going to do our best to stay quiet. We'll get to touch the last animal on the way out the door. So you guys don't have to ask me every animal I get out. It will be the last one. I'll tell you when it's time to touch. It'll be when we're leaving. If we have questions, I will do my best to get to as many as I can. But like I said, there's a lot of us in here. So if I don't get to your questions, save it. You can ask me at the end. You can ask me afterwards, okay? I'm happy to stick around and answer questions. Are you guys ready to move? You might notice I gotta spray my hands with some special water first. Does anybody know what my first animal is? A salamander, she said. This is Pickles. Can you say hi, Pickles? He is a tiger salamander. Now we have these guys right here in Iowa. Who's seen one in the wild before? Anybody? They're kind of hard to find, you guys. They're hard to find for a couple reasons. One, they're nocturnal. What does that mean? To be nocturnal. Yeah, that means they come out at nighttime and they sleep all day. So they're not really out when we're out. The other reason they're hard to see is they have wonderful camouflage. They blend into their environment very well to the mud and the water and the dirt and the grass that they're hanging out around. So it's hard for us to spot these little critters when they're outside. Tiger salamanders are amphibians, so that means they like to be close to the water. That's why I sprayed my hands with that water before I got pickles out today. If his skin gets too dry, it's uncomfortable for him. It's itchy, it's scratchy, it doesn't feel good. So I have to do my best to make sure he stays nice and slimy when we're traveling. Sounds kind of gross, doesn't it? Amphibians like frogs and salamanders, they have to have slimy skin to be healthy. If it dries out, they don't like that. So Pickles lives with four other salamanders at the zoo. They get along pretty well. They're good at sharing their food and their space, so we can let as many of them live together as we have room for. His roommates' names are Clawson, Chip, Dell, and Olive. They like to cuddle. They're all named after pickles or olives because they're slimy and they kind of feel like pickles and olives. So that's how they got their names. They live a long time. Pickles here is over 10 years old, we think. He came from a nature center, so it's a little hard for us to know his exact birthday. But that's our best guess. He is our oldest salamander at the zoo. He likes to go outside and go swimming in his little pool. And he also likes to soak in the bath inside as well. In the winter time, Salamanders in Iowa hibernate. Does anyone know what hibernating is? What is it? You sleep in the winter. So Pickles would dig himself a little hole in the mud and he would sleep all winter long just like a bear and keep himself warm down there. Now he eats bugs at the zoo. Does that sound tasty to anybody? 
Yes, I don't think so. I think bugs sound kind of gross, but he loves to eat crickets, and sometimes for a special treat, he gets earthworms too. Slurps them up. He doesn't have any teeth to chew with, so he just swallows his food whole. I see a lot of patient hands waiting. Do we have some questions about pickles right now? I'll try to get to a few of them. We'll stick to questions just for now, and we can save stories for the end, okay? I want to make sure everyone has time for questions. What's your question? Where do we find him? So I think he came from a nature center. You have to have a special permit to have native Iowa wildlife. So we wouldn't go out in the wild and take him from the wild. And if you ever see a salamander out there, you should leave them out there because they have a job to do in nature. They need to eat bugs and be a part of the ecosystem where they're from. Uh, I had a fly and I, I have flies in my house. Flies in your house, that happens. What's your question? Why do they have camouflage? Why do you guys think it's important for animals to have camouflage? Yeah, so predators can't find them and eat them. It helps them to hide a little bit better. Do we have a question over in this area? What's your question? They can swim. So because he's an amphibian, that means he started his life in the water. He hatched from a slimy little egg. Salamanders can lay thousands of eggs in the water. And he was kind of like a tadpole when he was born. Have you guys heard of tadpoles, baby frogs? Yeah. Salamanders are a lot like tadpoles. So he swam around in the water. He didn't have legs yet. He only had a tail for swimming. And when he grew up, he grew his legs and he walked out onto the land. And he still stays close to that water, just in case he needs to take a little dip and get his skin wet again. But yes, they're great swimmers. Another cool thing about their tail is if a predator caught them by their tail or their foot and it came off, they can regrow their body parts. Isn't that amazing? It's kind of like a jellyfish. Yeah, how cool is that? Do you have a question over here? What? Oh, we'll show you the fourth animal when we get to the fourth animal. Do we have any questions back here? What's your question? What's your question right here? They could stick a little bit. Do we have a question over in this area? What's your question? We'll touch the last animal today. I'll tell you guys when it's time, okay? One more. They sleep out winter. Yeah, they sleep during the winter. They hibernate. Um, so, like, um, if a predator caught them by their leg or tail, it would, it would, it would like, drop from the winter. It could drop, and then they could regrow that leg or tail. All right, if you guys want to say bye, pickles, I'm going to put them away. Let him go back to his wood chips. All right, let's try to quiet our voices a little bit so we can make Miss Rachel here feel comfortable. Can you guys say hi, Rachel? Hi, Rachel. Who wants to raise their hand and tell me what Rachel is? Who knows what she is? An otter. She is related to an otter. She is like cousins with the otter. Do you know over there? She is a ferret. Does anyone here have a pet ferret at home? Raise your hand if you have a pet ferret. A couple of you guys maybe have a pet ferret. So Rachel used to be somebody's pet. We adopted Rachel from the Animal Rescue League. Has anyone been there before? It's an awesome animal shelter where you can adopt your pets. And that's where we get most of our uh, ferrets at the zoo. Actually, all of our ferrets at the zoo have come from the Animal Rescue League. People get ferrets as pets a lot and then realize that they're a lot more work than they were thinking. And they end up back at the animal shelter, unfortunately. So. Before you get a new pet, it's a great idea to do lots of research first to make sure you can keep it forever and it's the right fit for your family. Some problems people can have with ferrets is they are stinky, you guys. They smell. They're part of the weasel family, 
So they have a natural musk to them. It's a very stinky, um, strong smell, and that's just how they are. You can wash them as much as you want. They're always going to stink. They also like to steal shiny things like jewelry and keys, things your parents might care a little bit about. And they like to hide those things where you might never find them again. They can escape from their cage or their enclosure where they live and they can get into the furniture, the fridge, the walls. They're really good at fitting their long skinny bodies into places they're not supposed to be. So those are just a few issues. They are really cool animals though. They love to have friends around. They love to play. Rachel's favorite toys are squeaky toys and stuffed animals. So she has a snake squeaky toy and a cheeseburger squeaky toy. It's really silly to see her running around with a cheeseburger in her mouth. And she loves to cuddle with her horse stuffed animal at night. Now ferrets will sleep about 20 hours a day. They sleep off and on all day long. They take many naps and they play in really short bursts. They don't have a long attention span. Rachel lives at the zoo with her sisters Monica and Phoebe and two older ferrets named Jack and Jill. And they all get along really well. They all cuddle in one hammock together when it's nap time. They like to go outside and dig in the wood chips sandbox together. Who's heard of a wild ferret before? Anybody? They're called the black-footed ferret. Rachel is not wild. She's a pet. She needs people to take care of her. But in the western part of the country, there's a ferret with black feet and a black mask across its face called the black-footed ferret, and they are very endangered. In the 1980s, they thought they were actually extinct. They there were none left. And then one person found a few of them still living, and zoos actually helped save the black-footed ferret. They took them from the wild, and when they had babies, they released the babies into really safe places that were protected in the wild, and now we have almost 1,000 black-footed ferrets since the 80s. So they're making a big comeback. It's a great success story for them. Now Rachel kind of looks like one. She's a lot friendlier and more cuddly than one would be. In the wild, black-footed ferrets, they eat prairie dogs and chipmunks. Rachel would try to cuddle with a prairie dog or a chipmunk if she saw one. She just eats ferret kibble. It looks like for cat food, but it's made for ferrets. Her body is still designed for tunnels, though, just like that black-footed ferret would be going in. Who's heard of a tunnel before? Where are they? Are they up there? No, they're underground, right? And do tunnels go in this nice straight line? No, they don't. What do they do? They twist and turn and go this way and that way. They get really small in spots. So ferrets have to have very flexible or bendy bodies to fit through those tunnels. Feel your backbones for me. Everyone feel those little bumps back there? Those are your vertebrae. Rachel has more of those bones than we have in her back, making her much more flexible than us. She can touch her nose to her toes just like that. And it looks a little silly to us, but it's important that a ferret's able to go through all those tunnels, that their body can bend with the curves of the tunnels so that they can catch food and escape predators. In the tunnels underground, do you think they can see very well? No, it's dark down there. They can't see very well. Ooh, she's got my mic. So ferrets have to use their other senses to get around underground. If she can't see, what other senses might she use? What do you think? Her sense of smell is very strong. Her sense of hearing is really great too, so she's always listening. And then her whiskers are the big one. She uses those whiskers to feel where she's going, to feel the sides of the tunnels everywhere. What questions do we have about ferrets? Why is she fuzzy? She's a mammal, right? All mammals have some sort of fur or hair on their body. They're also warm-blooded and they give birth to live young. So she would have kits if she had babies. And they're pretty helpless when they're first born. Their eyes aren't open yet. They don't have all their fur. So they have to stay underground in the burrow with their mom and nurse until they're old enough to go out and learn how to hunt with her. Why do they use their whiskers? When animals can't see very well, they might use, or even when they can see, they use their whiskers to feel and balance, to know where they're going. It's kind of just like having feelers out there to help them get around. What's your question? She's just wiggly and squirmy. That's how she is. Rachel's about three years old. I'm guessing there are no three-year-olds here that get wiggly and squirmy ever. No, I don't believe it. 
She can see, they just don't have the best vision. Some animals can just see better than other animals. What's your question? They do love to dig. It's one of their favorite things to do. What's your question? Yes, they sure do like to dig. Do you have a question right here? What's your question? Yep, she is pretty cute. Who has a question? Something they want to know about the ferret. What's their hands for? Their nails on their paws are for digging. And they do grow really fast. You know, it kind of depends. I think they can have up to like 12 kits. All right, I'm going to work my way back up to the front. Do we have one more question up here? What's your question? The whiskers are just like fingers. The whiskers are kind of like fingers to help her feel. Yeah, very good. All right, do you guys want to say bye to Rachel before I put her away? She's getting really wiggly on me. <laughs> bye. So we'll give Rachel a little refill on her food here. And I'm going to get someone else out for you. <laughs> Who would like to raise their hand and tell me what they think I'm holding right here? What do you think he is? A turtle. He looks a lot like a turtle. Has a lot in common with one. He's actually not technically a turtle, though. What do you think? A tortoise. This is Chukwa. Can you say hi, Chukwa? And he is called a Burmese star tortoise. So Chukwa is native to Southeast Asia, very, very far away. And this species of tortoise is actually um, virtually talked about extinct earlier, how it means there are none left. There aren't really many left in the wild of this species. So Chukwa is very, very important to his kind. He will hopefully help repopulate the wild tortoise population someday. It's part of a special, special program. Now he's about seven years old. Do I have any seven-year-olds in the room today? Anyone the same age as Chukwa right here? Oh, you're not seven years old, are you? And he will live a very long time. Tortoises can live to be over 100 years old, you guys. They can live a long time. He is full grown, though. He is not a large tortoise. He's a very small tortoise. Who's been to the Blank Park Zoo and seen big tortoises before? The Aldabra tortoises? We have one that weighs 500 pounds, and he's 90 years old. Now, Chuck won't get that big, but he will live that long, probably. He'll have a long, long lifespan. Now, they get the name Star Tortoise from this beautiful pattern on their shell. This radiating pattern kind of looks like a star. There are many different types of star tortoises around the world, in India, Madagascar, and then, of course, um, Myanmar, where he is native to as well. And his shell is important. Why is a tortoise shell important to them? What do you think? Yeah, it protects him from predators. If he gets scared, he has a place to go and hide, right? We all get scared sometimes. And this is like his home. It's connected to his body. He never takes it off. It goes with him everywhere he goes. He needs it to keep himself safe. His shell grows. When he gets older and bigger, his shell gets bigger with him. And Chukwa here has a big, heavy, bulky shell. That's the difference between a tortoise and a turtle. Turtles like to swim, so they usually have thinner, lightweight shells that help them be good at swimming. He doesn't like to swim, so he can have this big, heavy shell to lug around on land with him everywhere he goes. He does love to take baths. He soaks in very shallow water in his little bathtub inside just about every day. He likes to go outside and bask in the sun and soak up the heat. 
And we do walk all of our tortoises and turtles in the education department, which is a very relaxing job to take a tortoise on a walk. We just take him out to a field and let him eat dandelions and get some exercise and sunshine. And when he goes on his walks, he has special friends that go with him. The giant bunny rabbits get to go on walks with him as well. What do you guys think Chuck Will likes to eat? Let's save our questions for just a little bit. What do you think he likes to eat? Lettuce. Loves to eat lettuce. He's an herbivore, so he doesn't eat any meat, just plants. He eats a lot of dandelions. He eats kale, rain, uh, mustard greens, turnip greens are some of his favorite foods. Mushrooms, sweet potatoes, carrots, cucumbers, green peppers, all sorts of veggies. He doesn't eat fruit, he doesn't need the sugar, just a lot of greens and vegetables. I'm going to set him down and see if he'll eat a little bit for us right now. You guys can use this chance to quiet your voices a little bit. I know there's a lot of us in here. But we are getting very noisy. Maybe we'll get to see him eat some food. Maybe we won't. Chukwa doesn't like to be held for too long. He gets kind of squirmy. So we put him on this thing and let him eat if he wants to. We'll see. I'll walk around a little bit. Do we have some tortoise questions while I'm walking around with him? What's your question? Yes, he can pull his head inside of his shell if he gets scared. What's your question back there? For protection. It keeps them safe from predators. You guys see that? He's eating now. They're very slow eaters. What's your question? Why does What's your question back there? Why does he go in his shell? If he gets scared, sometimes he just wants to hide until he... What's your question? The females, you know, there's not a lot known about how many eggs they lay since they are extinct in the wild. I think they're doing a lot of research on that right now. Great question. He, it would probably hurt him, but their shells are very tough, so they don't crack easily, luckily. What's your question? Do they, do they burn in the ground? I don't think this type of tortoise digs very far underground, but there are some, like, gopher tortoises that can dig 30 foot deep. All right, I'm going to make my way back up to the front. Excuse me. What's your question up here? Kind of like what? So tortoises have really big, bulky, bumpy shells to protect themselves. They don't have to worry about being lightweight for swimming. They can have a nice, thick, bumpy shell. What's your question? When they saw a turtle on top of my driveway. A turtle in your driveway? We have lots of turtles here in Iowa, don't we? What's your question? Yes, she asked, is his backbone on his shell? Remember when we felt our backbones earlier? So his backbone is connected to his shell. So are his ribs. It's part of his body. They can never, ever take that shell off. It's connected to them. So she asked, because he's from Asia, where did we Part of the SSP a program for endangered animals. It's a breeding program. So we match them up with animals that are a good fit for them across the country. So he may go to another zoo someday if they find a girlfriend for him there. It just kind of depends. Or maybe they'll send the girl to us. That's kind of what I'm hoping. His name is Chukwa because there's a legend about a tortoise that carried the whole world on his shell. And that tortoise's name was Chukwa. So that's how he got his name. All right, one more question right here. What are his predators? Humans are their biggest predator, unfortunately. People overhunt these guys. Um, birds of prey and large carnivores might try to eat them too. All righty, I'm going to put Chukwa away if you guys want to say bye, Chukwa. Get out one more for you.
Okay, guys. Let's use this chance to turn our voices back off and our listening ears back on. You need to try to stay quiet for this one so we can have time to touch them at the end, okay? All right, let's turn our voices off. Who would like to raise their hand and tell me what I'm holding right now? Who knows what he is? What is he? He is. I heard crocodile and alligator. How do we tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Their snout. You're right. So an alligator is going to have a shorter, rounder, U-shaped snout, like the letter U, right? A crocodile is going to have a longer, pointier V-shaped snout, like the letter V. And a crocodile is going to have all his teeth sticking out, the top and the bottom. An alligator only shows his top teeth when his mouth is shut. Go ahead and put your hands down. They're going to get tired holding them up for so long. I'll answer some questions at the end about him. First, I want to tell you a few things. His name is Bog. Can you say hi, Bog? And he is an American alligator. So there are American alligators and Chinese alligators. There are two types in the world. The Chinese alligator is very endangered. The American is not. And Bog is about four years old. Any four-year-olds around today? Yeah. So a lot of people are surprised that he's this size at four years old. They think he would be a little bit bigger. But did you guys know alligators grow their whole entire lives? They never, ever stop growing, and he will live to be about 70. So if you guys got taller for 70 years straight, you think you'd get pretty tall? Definitely. He will be about 10 feet long someday. He's going to be huge. And we will not be taking him to libraries when he's 10 feet long. He will go back to Florida, where he came from. He's from an accredited education facility there, so he will live there. People can come learn about alligators and visit him. But for now, he's traveling with us in Iowa. Bog lives by himself. He is our smallest alligator at the zoo. With the big alligators that we have there. Alligators aren't crazy about sharing their space and their food. They can get pretty territorial. So we give them each their own pool to live in. We have three right now. They do still kind of talk to each other, though. Do, does anyone know what noises alligators make? Do you know? Very cool. So alligators can growl and hiss. And sometimes our alligators, when there's a thunderstorm, they growl at the thunder outside. I think they think it's another alligator or something. They'll growl and try to sound really tough. When they're babies, they make a chirping noise, kind of like a baby bird. And that's only when they're scared. They call for their moms. And if they're really scared, their mom will come pick them up in her mouth and carry them to safety. Alligator moms will take care of their babies for about two years, and that's super rare for reptiles to do. Alligators are the only, one of the only ones that care for their young. Now, Bog likes to eat alligator pellets, bugs, and worms, some of his favorite snacks. In the wild, he'd also be eating fish, frogs, eggs, whatever he could fit in his mouth. Alligators are not picky eaters at all. They'll eat anything they can. They're also pretty lazy hunters. So they will sit in the water with their mouth open and just wait for something to float in. Do you guys know, is he an amphibian like the salamander? What is he? He's a reptile. What do you guys know about reptiles already? What do you know? They have scales covering their body to protect them. Now alligators have special scales called osteoderms. Can you say that with me? Osteoderms. That means he has bone built into his scales to make him extra tough. And that's just to protect him. Now in the wild, they don't have a lot to worry about. Uh, they're at the top of the food chain. They're called apex predators. So their only other predator would be humans or bigger alligators. Other than that, they're kind of the king of the jungle where they're from, or the king of the swamp, I guess. You're going to find them in swamps, marshes, bogs, rivers, streams, in the southeast United States, South Carolina as well. They are really good at swimming. What on his body 
Anybody do you see might help him be good at swimming in the water? See any body parts that look like they'd come in handy? His tail is super strong. That's the main way that they swim. They whip that tail back and forth and it propels them through the water at about 20 miles per hour if they want. What else might help him swimming in the water? What do you think? His feet, she said. Flippers in the water for him. He can paddle just like a duck. His eyes are also really important. Did anyone here know alligators have a third eyelid? It's clear. So when they shut their clear eyelid, they can still see. And it's like putting on goggles before they go swimming. So when they are swimming fast, it still keeps their eyes clear and safe when they're moving. Now he does have about 86 very sharp teeth in his mouth. And they will get bigger when he gets bigger. And a lot of people ask about him biting or if we're worried about him biting. We are not because we never give him a reason to, right? We never touch his face. We never bother him while he's eating. And we're always quiet and calm around him. When we touch him later, we'll touch him back here, not by his face. And as long as we follow all those rules, Bog is happy and comfortable and wouldn't have any reason to bite us, right? If we saw a wild alligator, would we want to go touch him like I'm touching Bog? No way. We would want to go tell a grown-up, right? A wild alligator does not know us, or any wild animal does not know us, and they might try to bite to protect themselves. So that's when we go tell a grown-up about that, okay? Big difference between them and Bog. What questions do you guys have about him? What do you want to know? What? Everybody will get a turn to if they want to, yep. Where are they from? The southeastern United States. Right, but we don't give them a reason to, right? Fishes could too. What's your question? Why do they what? Oh, why do they like it hot? So they're reptiles. That means they're cold-blooded animals. It means they need the heat from the sun to keep themselves warm. They can't keep themselves warm like we can. So hot weather is really comfortable for them. What's your question right here? Yep. Habitat, so the wetlands, swamps, marshes, fresh water, like rivers, streams, ponds. They don't really like salt water like a crocodile does. They do have webbed feet. Yeah, it really helps them when they're swimming. Okay, a couple questions over in this. I know you guys are waiting very patiently. What? He has 86 teeth, yep, and he can lose those teeth over and over and over as many times as he needs to. He'll go through about 2,000 teeth in his lifetime. Did you have a question? Want to think about it for a little bit? Okay. Those are his scales too, and those just help keep him safe, right? I'm going to walk to the back one more time and see if there's some questions back here. And then we'll touch him in a little bit, okay? Who has a question, something they want to ask about him? Does he have eyelashes? Nope, no eyelashes. Not like us. His tail helps him to swim. Why does he have such a long tail? It makes it strong and powerful, and he goes like this, and it pushes him through the water. Their tail is always half of their body length. So if he were 10 feet long, his tail would be 5 feet long. If he were 20 feet long, his tail would be 10 feet long. What's your question? He does swim, yeah? 
All right, guys, I'm going to make my way back up to the front and give you some special instructions if we do want to touch. If I didn't get to your question, save it, okay? You can ask me when we're all done, and I'm happy to answer it. If we want to touch, I'm going to pick a line leader. I'm going to pick someone who's waiting quietly, and we will line up behind that person. We can use two fingers, no more, right back here on his tail. We are not going to touch his feet. We are not going to try to touch his face. If anybody does that, okay, that means anybody still waiting in line won't get a turn. So we need to make sure we're following the rules. After we get a chance to touch him, we need to get a squirt of hand sanitizer. It's always a good idea to wash your hands after touching the animals. Other than that, I want to say thank you so much, everyone, for coming today. When you come and support our program, that means Blank Park Zoo can turn around and donate money to animals and organizations that need some help, like giraffe, rhinos, and snow leopards. So everyone in this room is helping us save animals in the wild right now, and I think that is so cool. So for my line leader, I am going to pick you, because you were really good at raising your hands and waiting quietly, so you can line up. Perfect. And then, if you want to feel the alligator, you can line up right behind this girl, okay? And you can go ahead. Oh. Yep, we'll go. Perfect. What do you think? Pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome.